morning uh, everyone hope you're all well morning socrates and baby one two three four five one Mimo, hello not really sure what i'm doing at the moment i've got this idea to do like a um like a Monkey King type image, maybe where he's sort of uh, in a cherry blossom tree, something like that. So I've just done a quick thumbnail, sort of five minute, uh, you know, doodle. And um, I'm going to start sketching it. If it goes well, I'm hoping I'll watercolour it as well. So I'm sort of rather pleased to be uh, announced as a Michael Harding ambassador. So it's not a big sort of plug or unboxing or anything. I've been using their paints for years anyway really like them and got the chance to sort of do a bit of an ambassador role so they sent me a really nice set of um um watercolor uh, as you can see liquid watercolors rather than the pan ones so i'm hoping that if the drawing goes well I'll, i can sort of add some color with these wa with these watercolors um but we'll see how it goes first. It may go terribly wrong and I don't bother colouring it. <laughs> Hi, Tom, Dale. Hi, Darren. Hi, Jungle Juice Lover. Andres. Grim Angel, hello. Adam Hilton, A, hey, how you doing, mate? Six Eyes Dragon, hello. Ace, hello. Jacob, hey, how you doing, mate? Good to see you on here. Oh yeah, I just want to talk just briefly about this. So yesterday I uh, did this drawing with my wrong hand so trying to I was always inspired by a guy I know called Michael Perry who's a sculptor at Games Workshop and he actually lost his arm in a medieval reenactment and he it was his sculpting arm so obviously Games Workshop miniatures 35 mil 28 mil tiny little figures that they work on at that scale and he taught himself to sculpt with his wrong hand in about three months I think he said so I've been practicing with my non-dominant hand which is for me my right hand and found that once you get over that sort of initial awkwardness which just takes some time and and it feels wrong um you know and uh not natural at all um once you sort of once your brain starts to get past that blockage it's actually quite an interesting exercise because you have to be a lot more it's a bit more like drawing with a brush pen you have to be a lot more sort of um make your decisions on the line before you put them down. Whereas bef with my left hand, I'll be far more sort of loose and uh, sort of automatic sketching, really. This, I have to think about it a lot more, but it also meant that I was thinking a lot more about very subtle little things like the angles on this arm, uh, the perspective, just a subtle perspective, which I might have skipped if I was doing otherwise. So. I thought it was quite an interesting exercise just in the um, by 
you know, going with your non-dominant, it's pushing you to sort of be more thoughtful and more um, precise and almost predetermined in, in the lines you're putting down. And yeah, there's some awkwardness and, you know, slightly wobbly lines where I don't have the same fine motor control. But overall, as an image, it, it turned out pretty okay. So, uh, and I'm hoping I, it'll carry over into the work I do with my left hand that I can sort of pick up, you know, and, and learn a bit from doing that. So it's an interesting challenge. So anyway, that's not just a flex, by the way. Okay, so as I said, I've got this little thumbnail. I'm going to start to um, try and, you know, get some some lines down to start this and just fiddle with the camera a bit to try and get a better angle for you. FXM said, yeah, he lost his arm in a medieval reenactment. Cannon went off and blew his arm off while he was loading it. <laughs> so I want to, while I'm planning this out, so as you can see on the sketch, I could, you know, the actual image of the, the figure is quite square. So I could do this landscape or portrait, whichever I, I chose, I sort of, you know, was leaning towards, but I quite like the idea of making a little more of the tree um, compositionally. So I've gone for a sort of, um, portrait format. I'm just going to make a couple of adjustments there. Can you tell us which study routine or resources to study? Uh, I don't know if I have a study routine. Um, I think it's like I've said before about um, for me of, of sort of life drawing um, and um, working on from anatomy books, uh, especially obviously for figures, but also I remember talking to Jim Gee a lot and he Took, he worked on the premise that if you s could do human anatomy, you could do basically most animal anatomy. Most animals are, are sort of working in the same, uh, working on the same principles and the same sort of, um, um, you know, joints. Uh, you know, like, for example, the front leg of a dog is basically the same mechanisms as a human but with you know certain ones are elongated so i think a, an, a sort of study of anatomy and an understanding of sort of basic mechanics of um of skeletal and muscular structure is really useful um, but I don't have a particular study sort of plan. Yeah, C, is that C quack? Yeah, I, I agree. You had a lovely line quality, didn't you? They, when you get up close, they've got a sort of wiggly wobbliness to them, which is really... Really nice. Esteban Salazar, hi. Oh, Ecuador, wow. Yeah, cycling's 
going okay. I'm old, I'm slow, but I'm still riding. So, you know, it keeps me sane. Do you have any Blood Bowl sketches? Um, unfortunately not. I did most of that stuff um, digitally. So I did a, I did one cover where I painted it in oils um, for, uh, I think the first video game they did of it. Then after that, I moved over to working. It was during my digital phase. So I worked in the, working predominantly digital for a few years. Brett Messi, good morning. Hi, Brett. Wow, Canary Islands. Some amazing uh, holiday destinations. Jacob, did you have a favorite part in June too? I think there's a few moments that really, I really liked when they were sort of in the arena and it went almost completely black and white. I was, thought that was quite striking, sort of bit of cinematography. Um, but no, I just, just felt so epic to me. I don't know, so many bits I liked, so. What were the deadlines like? at GW when you were in oils in, uh, they weren't too bad. Usually we're working quite far ahead of, um, you know, on projects. So they weren't, they weren't too sort of stressful really. Um, in fact, I actually found that when I moved to freelance and working, uh, sort of, um, you know, from home with my own uh, set up and, and no sort of um, managerial tinkering, I could work, I don't know, I think maybe ended up working maybe three times as fast. <laughs> so it wasn't super stressful deadline wise there. Johan, hey, how you doing? What are you drawing today? Yeah, I'm thinking of a monkey king in a blossom tree that I may watercolour at some point. I can't imagine I'll get round to watercolouring it um, in this stream, but I might start it and then, uh, you know, continue next week. Yeah, Tom, they were pretty long, sort of. Some of them were super sort of um, like intense pieces, you know, where you had to sort of um, put, you know, multiple figures and check all the insignia and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, and then others were a bit more straightforward. Some of the fillers and that kind of thing were a lot more sort of straightforward. Pale spider, young Carl. I hope you all, I wish I was young. Uh, I'm an old crony these days. So you can see how I'm working sort of some gestural stuff in and um, thinking about perspectives on arms. So I'll often use little um, tricks like, say I'm across this bicep here and I want it sort of sl angled slightly away from the viewer, I might add a, a sort of band or, or you know, whether the, the sort of samurai armor here is attached like that by a, a, a sort of band. So by following the sort of circular form of the arm, I'm helping to 
describe the perspective there. So, and same here. So if I want that more angled towards, I can, you know, add something, whether it's a bracelet or just to help describe that sort of form. Zwei Hander, yes, Wukong, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna paint it, I think, Grim Angel, yeah. With uh, watercolour, probably. If Brett Messi, if money weren't an option, what project would you like to make happen? Oh my God, I don't know, mate. Uh, I don't really know. I, I'm a bit, I sort of flit between things that I want to do and things that I'd like to be sort of making more of. Like I've made a big push to do a, a more cycling paintings this year and managed to get an exhibition <clears throat> with the help of, of my wife and the people at Luca Comics and Games um, managed to get that to happen this year. So that's been a good... And that's not really a financial sort of big financial money earner for me um unless a collector decides they want to buy a load of paintings so that's uh one that i've made happen this year but i don't know i don't really know i'm just happy most of the time just doodling stupid things So, so I hand a, how do I know which? Well, it's part of it's like confidence. Uh, knowing that, you know, I mean, I'm not like, uh, how can I describe? I'm not like super uh, accurate about things like anatomy and things, but I try to give the impression of it being right, if you know what I mean. So I don't obsess about getting everything absolutely perfect, but I try to give the impression that it's about right, if you know what I mean, it's, it's close enough. So I don't worry about a lot of that stuff um, too much. And then what I'll do, as you probably see shortly, is I'll take a, like a putty rubber, kneadable eraser and um, rub a lot of these lines away and, and then go back in and tighten them up a bit so that I can, you know, uh, I'm, I'm essentially, it's like working with layers, I suppose, with Photoshop, you know, you're doing a, a, a loose gestural underdrawing and and then refining over the top. So, yeah, so I'll probably, you know, like I'm thinking about the angles of the branches here and, you know, how it's coming towards you so you can overlap a bit of this cherry blossom idea here. Um, but also I want that to have a nice flow to it. So it's, it's kind of a compositional element as well. And also quite sort of apt for spring, I suppose. And then I'm thinking about sort of the usual like layering up you know, of, of equipment and, and accoutrements and, and things like that, so. Sometimes if I'm finding stuff awkward, I'm not, I'm not finding this awkward, but you know, the, if I don't want to draw something often, I'll just cover it up with something like, you know, the, the clothing sort of blowing in the wind there.
Hey Carl, would you say this is your favourite step in the art creation process? And if not, what is? Uh, just depends. Some, sometimes it's just the one that's going well that's my favourite. Other times, you know, like it's always, you've got that promise, haven't you, at the start of it being a really good image. Then inevitably, at some point it goes off the rails or goes a bit wrong, so... I suppose this bit's quite exciting in that, you know, the image has just started. Uh, but then other times I quite like, you know, for example, when I go in and start uh, penciling this in, I can kind of switch to a different mode of drawing almost where you're following lines and, and you can be a bit more... Uh, like, you know, you're creating the, the details a bit more, so I quite like that as a, as a part of the process as well. And then usually I mess it up when I start colouring, so that's probably the bit where I'll, you know, get frustrated. When you Seth Lynch, when you start doing digital, did you find your skills transitioned easily? Uh, not easily. I sort of... I got a bit frustrated with it because I could see a lot of... Um, you know, there's a lot of amazing artists out there and I couldn't work out how they were doing it, so... I found that a bit frustrating in itself. Um, I mean, I could, you know, manage to pick it up and, you know, do a, a decent job, but it wasn't the... I never got the results that I was hoping to get, to be honest. Brandy Muffin, hi, County Durham. Least favourite mute medium? Probably, hate to say it, but probably digital. Yeah. What eraser do you use? I'm just using a simple putty rubber. So, and then I, I roll it you know, knead it a bit and then just, you can use it quite lightly, you know. Farhan Khan can switch your camera. What, what do you mean? You want it switching which way? Horizontal? Is that better for you guys? I don't know. Love Bish, hey, how you doing? Uh, did your brother coach, he, he sort of coached me. My brother's a really good digital artist, but mainly he was just there on call when I panicked and thought, you know, oh, I've erased everything or this has gone wrong. I'd just ring him up or actually work together in, um, games workshop next to each other so uh yeah he was my sort of main port of call when things start to go wrong
So I'm trying to keep the lines because I'm thinking I may watercolour this. So I don't want to go in sort of too heavy with um, hatching and things like that. I want to keep them quite simple so that I can let the, you know, the colours do a bit of the work for me. But also I sort of have come to realise that one of the, maybe the strong points in my drawing is the line quality. So I'm trying to retain a bit of that more and more. So, you know, if I'm doing, for example, oil paintings or, um, yeah, well, mainly the oil paintings, fantasy stuff that I'm doing. I'm trying to retain a bit of that line quality in there. So, you know, coming up with techniques that mean that I can sort of add colour but not lose the line, if you know what I mean. Hey Callum, how you doing? Yes, Jester77, seven, seven, greetings from North Sweden. Is it still like super cold there? I've got a friend called Damien who lives out there. Uh, he said it was still zero degrees. So I'd love to visit though one day. Zero degrees and snowing, but not so cold, really. <laughs> that sounds absolutely freezing, but I bet it's spectacular. Callum. Um, that's great news, mate. Great stuff. I bet you can't talk about what you're working on, but I'm glad you're making it happen. And Beestrom is six degrees where he's at, but snow the other day. Oh, so you're in Sweden as well. Maybe one day we'll hook up in Sweden. So I really want to see the Northern Lights. That's one of my sort of um, do before you die. Bucket list things, I think. Seth Lynch, do you have a magic, favorite magic card? Um, I do have one or two that I've, was pleased with but often I got a bit I mean I still work for magic and enjoy working from but I got a bit frustrated I think mainly because I didn't play the game um and I still don't but that I didn't really understand the game mechanics so often I'd um I'd do I'd get a card that wasn't that powerful but do a really nice painting and then it doesn't prove to be a popular card because it's not you know that good good a game mechanic or things like that so I don't know there's some that I'm pleased with like Krenko was a, a bit of a classic and and that's a, a, a powerful and popular card
much by hand a thank you. <laughs> it's coming together a bit now, so. Mohammed Dali, thank you. Snowfix art tutorials. Is that a final piece? This is a final piece, but I'm hoping that I'll um uh that I'll watercolour it. Um probably not today, to be honest. I I I'll probably only do an hour today of of streaming, so I might uh finish it next Friday or if I get a chance sort of do another stream in between or you know just keep working on it until it's finished on you know here on YouTube make it an, an exclusive for, for YouTube maybe next one do Godzilla <laughs> Yeah, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? Avalanche. Oh, Adam Hilton, when's your exhibition? Um, I think it will be in Lucca in Italy on the between the 3rd and the 10th of May. So, um, during the there's a big bike race, the Giro d'Italia, and they've got a, a stage finish in Lucca. So it's sort of coinciding with that. Avalanche, once asked what you do on days when your enthusiasm flags or you're tired of. I just force it, yeah. Like, to be honest, today I'm feeling a bit tired and not totally um, on the ball, but, you know, I've been doing this so long that it's uh i can manage it even when i'm on a bit of a off day do you have a travel set in case you want to draw on a train or on the street if you so can you do a quick walk through um that's Matthi matthias i don't really have a travel set i've got like i just take a sketchbook and a like I've got this really cool little Penfield, um, I don't know what you call it, like little bag with a strap and it's just packed full of pens. Um, like, you know, black wing sharpener, pencils. Um, and I just carry that around with me and a, and a sketchbook wherever I go really. So um, most of the time I've got something with me that means I can, you know, make a sketch at least. Zweihander, what's your favourite film? I think it's still Taxi Driver with Robert De Niro. Yeah, love that film. Johan, what's your favourite kind of monsters? I've done some Greek mythology stuff. Yeah, I've done some for one of the companies that I work for. Um, I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't say there's a specific... I, I probably like more humanoid stuff, maybe. You know, I think... People are what I draw best out of anything, but I really like 
drawing horses as well. Um, but I don't know, I wouldn't say I've got one specific, you know, um, favourite. Joe, thanks, Joe. <laughs> Moby Brit, yeah, good timing for Pog to win the Giro. Yeah, that's, oh, there was a big push this week. I'd started a Pogachar painting. I think I posted it on my Insta a few times. And I really wanted to finish that for it to get into the exhibition. So um, I used a lot of, there's a, a, a drying medium called liquin that I, I used a lot of to make sure it was all dry and ready to go for for the exhibition. So we'll be packing paintings up tomorrow, uh, me and my wife, and hopefully the kids will muck in and help. Hi, Natalia. Does I handed you like mythology? I do, yeah. You used to read a lot more than I do now these days, but um, I just find I'm... I just find it hard to read after I've been drawing all day, to be honest. So I don't read as much as I used to. But yeah, I do like it. Greg, do you find Black Wing Pearl nicer than the mat? Uh, maybe just a little bit. I just think that they're just the right softness. Like the mat is really soft and black and um, these seem to be just a bit more balanced. I'm quite heavy handed with the, the lines that I make. So if I'm not careful, the mat gets a bit smudgy and almost too heavy whereas these are a, a good balance for my sort of you know not style but you know I'm a bit like I say sort of heavy heavy handed sometimes so yeah these seem to work the best for me but to be honest they're all uh, I haven't tried one of their pencils that I didn't like. They're all pretty, you know, pretty much the best pencils I've tried, to be honest. And I'm not a, you know, brand ambassador or anything like that. They're just great pencils. Daniel Turan, hi, in Mexico. Nick, checking in from Savannah. Hi, uh, Nick. Jameson, hey, how you doing? Mark Sifai, hi. Hope you're well in Germany. Yeah, Greg, no, I still pay for mine, to be honest. I don't get them sent me free yet. And they're not cheap, are they? But I suppose my thought process is if I'm selling or making a living from this, it's one of the few overheads I actually, I actually have, you know. So I don't mind paying a bit extra for really good pencils.
Noginogfr. Napoleon's Soldiers and Dragons was actually from a book by, I think she's Canadian, Naomi Novik. She did a series of books called Temeraire, which was like a, an imagined sort of um, alternate history where there was a sort of um, an air force almost in Napoleonic times, which was uh, dragons. So yeah, wasn't my idea. It's a good one though. <laughs> yeah, tax deductible, Callum, all tax deductible. James L, what's your favorite shape of pasta? Oh, I don't know. I think I like orecchietti or, yeah. Is the monkey god from Hindu or Shinto? Ugh, couldn't say. Uh, it's just my version. So I, I, I wouldn't say it was um, accurate for either. I think the, the sort of inspiration and reason that I started uh, drawing the monkey king was partly from a love of the work of a friend and a bit of an art hero of mine, Katsuya Tarada, who did a, well, a series of amazing images. Um, and also when I was a kid, there was a TV series, a Japanese TV series just called Monkey that I really loved. So I guess that's Shinto more than Hindu. Is this for a cover project or personal? It's just personal, really. I'll probably, if it turns out well, I could maybe make prints of it or um, sell the original, maybe. try to think about you know like I really I've described the sort of bend in the abdomen there quite simply you know I'm just trying to think about sort of contour lines really that sort of wrap around the object and then the rest I can do um, with the paints hopefully
And here again, like I said earlier, I'm sort of thinking about, um, you know, the, 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 the sort of angle of that arm. So I want it to feel like it's, it's got quite a bend in it and it's coming towards you just ever so slightly. So very sort of shallow ellipse shape on these sort of uh, bracelets that he's got. It's, so adding those sort of accoutrements and, um, you know, details can really help to kind of describe the form as it were. Ludwig, hi, <laughs> thank you, Bade, hi, Esteban, are you watching Shogun? I haven't watched it yet, I want to watch it with my son, but he's sort of, he's threatening to read the book, so I may have to hold off for a while, it's a big old book as well, over a thousand pages. Daniel Turan, what music? I don't know, I haven't got a particular sort of, I like a lot of sort of um, old school hip hop and, but I also was a huge Hendrix fan. So I like a bit more sort of, and I play a bit of guitar, so I like a bit of guitar based stuff as well. Um, my dad, as a jazz musician, so I sort of grew up listening to jazz and Coltrane and Miles Davis, people like that. Um, so it's a good mix, really, of different genres. Yeah. Uh, Esteban, yeah, I'm thinking of that sort of samurai stuff, but also trying to think about attachment points. So I've got like a, you know, a rope or, or something that's attaching it around his torso and then also to the arm there. So trying to make it look like it actually works. Carl Ingvarsson, hi from Sweden. Have oh, it really depends on on the piece, really. You know, some if it's a multi-figure piece, it can be, you know, weeks, a month. Um, single figure oil painted, I'd probably turn around in maybe. I don't know, three days, something like that, two or three days. Um, some of the cycling portraits, or some take weeks, some take days. It just depends on the image that I'm working from and how, you know, much of a in the zone I am, really. Sometimes they happen easy and quickly, other times they happen a bit more sort of... A, you know, awkward and difficult process, so they're not always straightforward. Have you done some 40K lately? No, I don't really do any uh, GW stuff these days. Um, I work predominantly for a company called Cool Mini or not. So um, a lot of it's sort of miniature based 
uh, games, but not 40k. Uh, sort of done, been there, done that. Uh, don't really. I like some of the imagery, but it doesn't hold a particular uh, attraction for me to go back and and do it all again. To be honest, I sort of. Um, as I say, I've been there and done that, so. Kendall Marlin, I'd love to see it. Yeah, Luke Cage, yeah, that'd be cool, yeah. Maybe next project, next live stream after I've done this. Mocky, hey, thank you, that's very kind of you. <laughs> so I try not to use the eraser too much, but occasionally, you know, like here, I want to put a hilt of, a, of some kind of a sword in, so I've not left space for that, so... Love Bistrum, what's your favourite part of streaming? I know this is probably going to sound really naff and a bit cheesy, but actually, like, one, I like the fact that it makes me sit down and do something that I want to do or, or, or that's not necessarily project-based. But also, I sort of... I don't know, it's a bit of a lonely existence sometimes being a freelance artist. You're kind of stuck in your little bubble a lot, don't really see people aside from your family and don't really have much sort of connection with um, other artists and things like that. So I, I do enjoy the interaction. Like I said before, that's probably why I'd lean more towards live streaming than doing a sort of really refined uh, how-to tutorial video on YouTube because it's a bit selfish, but me personally, I like that sort of having a bit of an interaction with the people who are watching. So. Ludwig, Ludwig, sorry, Ivan Lord. Wouldn't be too much to tell us a little bit about the gestural and descriptive marks. Uh, I think it's just my process, really. I've sort of come up with this sort of system where I can sketch things quite loosely and um, keep a bit of movement. I, I was aware that for a while that every time I was drawing, I was losing some of the sort of, um, you know, really like, what would you call it? A sort of active and sort of um, gestural movement lines that were there in the first thumbnails or, or something. You know, if I was working on a bigger painting, I'd obviously do a series of thumbnails and often even little studies of the main figures. And I was aware that I was sort of losing a lot of that, that sort of fluidity and movement that, um, that was there in the, in the in initial sketches. So I sort of came up with a system that works for me. I can't do that like junky thing of sort of just drawing without pencil lines. I feel more comfortable and like I do a better job if I've 
got some lines underneath. It just allows me to relax and let my... I think sometimes if I'm trying to draw like that with a with a with just a pen and, and you know, like Jungi did, um, actually the lines are a bit sort of hesitant and, and not very interesting. I'm so worried about where they go and if they're right. So this this way I work actually is closest to me, I think, and, and you know, my style, I suppose, as it were. So the gestural lines are just to sort of inform and add movement and, um, you know, composition, and they're, they're, they're sort of just that initial stage of getting the... Uh, getting the thing started. They also get rid of the white paper, which is a bit intimidating when you first start. Maeve Collier, can you say pancake? I can say pancake. Uh, Kendall Martin got to love Prince. Yeah, I like big Prince fan. Oh, Dav sketch. Oh, thank you. Got three of my originals. That's very cool. Thank you, mate. sort of really got into drawing hands lately as well, really trying to sort of, um, I got a bit frustrated for a while. I wasn't great at doing them, but I'm trying to really, you know, like I think about the muscle and the, so as we're doing this, this one here, you know, where you have that sort of area of a thicker muscle and then where the, the, the sort of bones of the, is it tarsals or metatarsals are and, and try to do it in as few lines as possible. Um, make the knuckles a bit squarer and the in between the knuckles a bit rounder. Khalid Sarhan, Phalanges, sorry, yeah, you're right, James, yeah. Uh, but learning to draw with both hands. Um, well, I was, as a child, a bit ambidextrous, apparently, so I did draw with both hands until I was about three, I think. Um but I also, I th it struck me that, um, you know, a lot of it is more about that initial feeling of like, this isn't right, this isn't the hand that I draw with. In, if I could get over that, then maybe, uh, you know, I could, I could do it. And then you can really, it's just... Um, the fine motor skills, I think, after that. You know, once you get past the pencil feeling weird in your hand and, and that sort of thing, it's, it's you know, everything else is, um, you know, it's like almost like a mental block. Once you get past that, you can, I think you can do more than you think. And then obviously the temptation is once it becomes difficult, with your non-dominant hand to switch to your dominant hand and fix it, where well, that sort of defeats the the object of the exercise, I suppose. Timos. Oh, thank you. That's 
very kind. I, I think part of the, what you're saying there comes from like a sort of love and an understanding maybe of sort of historical stuff as well. So I was had quite an interest as a kid in sort of um, historical, uh, you know, military stuff. So I think that informs a lot of it. And then from there, you know, obviously working at Games Workshop, you looked at a lot of um, source material. Obviously, a lot of their Warhammer stuff is historically, if it's not based, it's historically informed, you know. So uh, you start to spend time trying to understand how... Um, you know, those, like, medieval suits of armour or, you know, military accoutrements and how they're layered up. And I think that's probably, a, you know, something that shows through in my work, maybe. Adam Hilton, love the Thanos and T shirt. Ah, great. I'm glad you like it, mate. It was fun to do, actually, that Thanos. I did a Viking Thanos for Adam, and he also bought a T-shirt, which is very kind of him, so thank you. If you're interested, there's T-shirts on my website and uh, also, obviously sketchbook i think the only one i've got available currently is sketchbook volume seven and also got quite a few like limited edition prints on there martin g did you travel to quebec no i'd love to get over to quebec actually it's one of the places i've always wanted to visit but no i've never made it over there i've been West coast of Canada with a while ago snowboarding um, to sort of around Edmonton and Alberta, places like that, uh, Banff, Jasper, but um, never made it to Quebec. Love to get over there at some point. So I'll probably try to get most of the figure penciled in because I've already done 66 minutes, I think, on here. So what I'll do is I'll try to get to a point where I've got, you know, uh, most of the figure put in. I may spend some time not live stream doing the, the getting it ready for paint, basically doing the, the cherry blossom tree that is is sat in and then next week I could come on live and hopefully um, not cock it up with paint. Noggy Nog, hi again. How much do you feel like being the descendant of Jean Giraud? I'd love to think I was even 10% as good as Jean Giraud, but I'm not. But yeah, he's just like a phenomenon, I think. No, nothing can compare to sort of the, the sort of he was prolific as well as um, a genius, I think. You know, that was the other thing, incredibly prolific. Snow fix, I have to go. <laughs> Take care, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> B 
Buto Get Better. I love your sketchbook tour on Proco. Yeah, it was, that was great fun to do, actually. Um, I hadn't met Stan before that trip. I did a trip, I think it was, was it 2019? Where I went over there with um, the Super Annie guys and Jung Gi and um, met Katsuya Tarada out there. And we did San Diego Comic Con together. We did a couple of other events and a bit of filming for Kazone Art. And then, um, yeah, met up with Stan and did uh, some some video stuff there. It was actually, yeah. I, I just hope he never releases the outtakes because there was a couple of bits me and him did where it, it was like I said some things that were not, they were a bit R-rated and yeah, we spent a bit too long laughing like teenage kids about uh, stupid things. But he's, he's a great guy, Stan. I've got a lot of time for him and really interesting sort of teaching methods and... Uh, you know, it's all a really good resource, I think, that he's built up. Love Bistrum, yeah. Yeah, how did you know that? Yeah, uh, maybe, yeah. Uh. Noggy Nog, yeah, he's a, he's a really nice guy, Stan. He's just, you know, he's a genuinely nice guy, uh, funny talented you know interesting and interested which i always like in people you know they're interesting but they're always interested in what other people have got to say and yeah i think it shows through in his in his channel as well you know Oh, they sensed it, did they? Man, honestly. I think it was referring to a, a magic convention that I'd been to and some weird guy just asked me to draw on, you know, at these magic conventions, a lot of the time people want you to sort of, um, like, not customise, but sort of, you know, um, do a little drawing on, on one of their cards. Usually that's your featuring your artwork, but they want you to sort of make it special by, by adding a personalised drawing. And some guy just asked me for some very weird uh, things on there. I had to actually at one point say, I'm not drawing that, sorry. <laughs> Tom Dale, yeah, yeah, he's, I haven't actually listened to it, but I've heard great things about his podcast, yeah. He's just really good that he's built that such a resource and it's it's actually, you know, well-respected and well-liked by, a, well, most of the artists that I know, you know, they all, they all know that he's doing and saying the right things. It's a good resource. It's not, you know, it's not, nonsense that he's putting out there.
So I'm just trying to work out. I've got, I don't know whether to do the leg sort of going up a bit more like that or down a bit more like that. I'm just trying to make a decision there on the fly really. Probably will do it more up, I think, like that. Tom Dale, I'm doing some, doing it on watercolor. It's quite a nice surface to work on. So do, yeah, it is. Yeah, I, I really like, uh, you know, the sort of the ones I'm using at the moment is Archer's Aquarelle, which is quite a a smooth, but one of the smoother surface ones, and it, it seems to take the pencil really well. It's sort of got just enough bite to it. For, the, for, for my sort of pencil style. Um, yeah. Uh, Ahmed, yeah, you can ask questions, yeah, of course. But yeah, it works really well it, on all, in oils as well. So what I'll, like what Tom's talking about on here is often, for example, even with this one, I could do it is I can, go in and I will fix it usually with a bit of um, just normal fixative spray to stop the pencil moving around too much. Um, and then I'll go in with Liquitex matte medium and sort of seal the whole painting. Um, and then I can go in over the top of that because it's like a, I'll put maybe two or three coats of that on and it 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 makes the uh, paper resistant to the oils and stops it sort of rotting and damaging the paper. And you can go in and, and paint with oils over the top of it. So for example, with this, I could, what, if I was doing it as an oil painting, I could fix this, put the Liquitex on and go in and start painting. Or another option I've been doing lately with my oil paintings is to, after this process, um, I would go in with uh, Sumi ink, sort of Chinese ink, and do like a grayscale. So I'll go over the, the sort of pencil lines and then I'll go in and um, add some tone into it and then fix that with Liquitex and that works quite well although it, it can sort of suck a bit of the life out of the colours. So you have to sort of compensate for that when you go in with the colour work. But um, yeah, that works quite well as well. So, you know, pencil, Sumi ink, then fix with Liquitex. MK, uh, thank you. <laughs> That's cool. I still find that weird that people do sort of artist research based on me. That's very flattering as well. Matthew Brook, yeah, they're not meant to be great, the oil paints. I've used them for a long time. I don't know if they've had any sort of impact on on me. Um, but I suppose you can, there's a lot of other options like the Michael Harding stuff. I've just got, they've just sent me a thinner that's, um, uh, you know, super eco-friendly, low odour and that sort of thing. So it's not like... When I first started out, you didn't have many other options other than sort of turpentine, which was really sort of smelly and 
apparently not very good for you. So, um, yeah. But they are the nicest I've found to use the oil paints. I just haven't found another medium that I like quite as much. Yeah, I love, yeah, Beestrom. I, uh, I mean, I could do that with this one, potentially. I could, what I could do is next week ink it in, in grayscale and then Liquitex and oil paint the following week. But, you know, it's quite a lengthy process to, um, you know, to get to the finished item. But it's something I'll try and post and show a bit of the sort of... Um, process really Gamsol yeah that's right Matthew that's a that's a good one I use one called Sansador as well which is quite good it doesn't seem to have a, an odor and you know it doesn't seem to be too heavy on the chest yeah the Michael Harding stuff um, I don't know if I've got it here or not. Uh, I've got this Miracle Medium. So that's odorless, plant-based, non-flammable. So that's all the stuff that you want it to be for oils. Also good for cleaning the brushes. So just don't drink it. Yeah, Bob. Yeah, that Tarzan anim animation was amazing, wasn't it? I always loved that. I loved the way they drew his feet on that. Yeah, good call that. Probably did that subconsciously. So I'm probably going to leave it soon. I've done like just a, an hour and 20 minutes. All I'll be doing next is sort of bringing... I want to do a bit of cherry blossom kind of coming down hit, hit into these areas here. But, you know, that's pretty boring for you to watch and then work out where the trees go in. Maybe something like that and have it kind of like it's coming towards you a bit here again. And then the, his staff will be slightly angled towards you. So I'll, I'll probably get may and maybe have another sort of branch or limb of the tree sort of going behind him as a comp compositional element. So I'll work all that stuff out in my own time, probably, and maybe post an image of it on on Insta so you can see it. Um, and then decide whether to do oils or watercolour next week. I think maybe watercolour, but I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not very good at making decisions. So yeah, there you go. I'll just take the camera and give you a, a close up of the, of the line work. Peach trees, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe peach blossom. Yeah, that might be good. So cheers, Bistrum. Yeah, nice to hear from you again. Thanks for staying in touch and following. Uh, I'm glad you liked it. I hope you all have a great weekend. Jacob, take care, mate. Look after yourself. Thanks for tuning in. See you later, Callum. See you, Brett. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you next time. Hopefully next Friday I'll be on. But I'll make sure I announce it on Instagram. Yeah. All right. Take care.